Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Kevin, Josh, and Tony Show. Uh, if you haven't watched our channel before, we review classical American literature. And uh, today, in particular, we'll be reviewing Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby and some of the major themes that are illustrated throughout. So uh, I hope that you guys will stay tuned and enjoy the show. Okay, so in Gatsby, one of the key themes is love. Love. In a dictionary, love would be an uh, intense feeling of deep affection. And we see this word love, love, love throughout the story. But is it true love? Absolutely not. The love is materialistic, to say the least. Uh, when Daisy sees Gatsby, she is admired by his house, his clothes, his car. and he, She doesn't even look at it. Let's take a look. So I have this really... Fancy sushi restaurant that I can't wait to take Great. you to. I'm so excited. Okay. Good evening today. Uh, we have on our menu from uh, Sushi Boy is a, a wide range of sushi and seafood. So I'm going to be back in a few minutes and I'll give you guys some time to see what you guys want to order. Okay? Thank you, sir. Yeah, they have a lot of varieties of stuff here. You're paying, right? Yeah, of course. Yes, I'm ready to order. I will have the lobster, okay. the shark, okay. the scallop, oh, okay. Okay. and whatever else is expensive. I mean, not expensive. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. And sashimi, lots okay. of sashimi of okay. the highest grade. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, your order will be done in about 30 seconds. Thank you. Okay. Waiter! Okay, this is going to be your guys' receipt for tonight, so... Thank you. Alright, 713. There you are. Okay, thank you. This feels a little light, though. When you when I see that over there, I'm like, are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. Let's look at another instance of insincere love. So when Tom Tom and Daisy have been married for years, living happily, okay, and then suddenly this dude named Gatsby comes strolling along, and now you have this uh, Tom versus Gatsby kind of thing. You know, both of these guys have money. They have the big house. They have the car. They have enough money to buy all the clothes you ever wanted. And when things get tense, Daisy doesn't know what to do. So he, she tells Tom, I don't love you anymore, and jumps ship to Gatsby. Like, are you kidding me? That is freaking ridiculous, okay? That just shows how, how insincere love is in the story. And it ties, it ties in back to the theme of how important this false love really is in The Great Gatsby. Now, uh, another significant theme that is demonstrated in The Great Gatsby is this sort of concept of time, you know. Fitzgerald really likes to make this emphasis on that time is lost and it's, it's never retrievable once it's gone. For example, when Gatsby goes over to Nick's house to meet Daisy, he nearly knocks over his old clock. Gatsby having lost all this time uh, not being spent with Daisy and he wasted so much time just just uh, not going to her house even though he lives so close to her and he's just he's just wasting his time that's what the clock demonstrates okay another prime example of this idea of lost time is as Gatsby is pacing back and forth in Nick's house waiting for Daisy to arrive now he's looking at his watch and saying you know no one's coming, no one's coming. It's this idea of, of again, lost time. Daisy is not coming, in fact. He has no chance with her anymore because he wasted so much time just not seeing her. Oh, dang it.
And so clearly here do these examples, uh, Fitzgerald definitely wants to illustrate this kind of idea of lost time, that time has been lost once you once it's passed. And so this definitely is an important theme that Fitzgerald wants to demonstrate in The Great Gatsby. So the next key theme present in The Great Gatsby is the theme of emptiness. It is clearly shown because Gatsby may look like he has it all together, he has like all the, all the big house, the big cars, the big whatever. But at the very least, being wealthy only gets you pretty much only the material goods to, to accommodate with it. But it doesn't give you the lasting happiness that's supposed to go with it. All this stuff can only be used as a disguise just to show that you have, that you're living the high life, which only makes temporary happiness there. But does all this stuff and money really mean everything? Are these all your shirts? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, there's so many! <laughs> Yay! So what'd you think of tonight's dinner? Pretty good, yeah. Cool. So, where do you feel like going now? Mm, Disneyland? Alright, sounds cool. Who's your favorite Disney character? Cinderella. Oh, why Cinderella? She's pretty, and she gets to marry a prince, drinks her princess, and she has lots of money, and mm -hmm. shoes, and dresses. People like her. Cool. I can't wait to watch the fireworks tonight. Yeah. So that was a pretty good dinner tonight, huh? So, where do you want to go now? Oh. And with that example, it clearly shows how having all this stuff does not give you, give you the lasting happiness if you don't have anyone to share it with. Otherwise, it can be a very lonely lifestyle, as it is served in The Great Gatsby. So along with emptiness, delusion is a key concept in The Great Gatsby. As is clearly seen, Gatsby just always chases after money just to fit in with the high class. Oh, sweet, a dollar bill. Oh my god, wait, no, come back. Wait, come back, come back, come back. Oh, sweet. Come back, wait, come on, come on, come on. Sweet, I'm almost so close, wait. Come back, come back, come back. No, I almost got you. I almost got you. No. So with Gatsby's example of trying to chase after money, it's reflected upon today's society of people following this similar trend to chase after money, but they end up failing doing so anyways. So this clearly shows how this delusion of money negatively influences people's minds to do this similar thing in order to attain fulfillment. And there you have it, those were some of the key themes we thought were important in the story. And uh, thank you for watching. And with that, that's the end of our show. And don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you tune in next week, we'll be doing Ernest Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises. Thank you. Bye. Something, do something. Yeah, it's our project. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take another look. Um, oh shoot, I'm like, hold up, I messed up. Knocking over Nick's clock when he meets Daisy in his house. And... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gatsby having the sense of lost time is when he's, you know, panting back and forth. Panting. What is that called? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? That's when you walk back and forth. Panting. No, that's a pan. To and fro. No, just like... Pacing? Pacing, pacing, oh, okay. yeah, like pacing. pacing back and forth. It clearly shows how, how having all this stuff doesn't give you lasting happiness as... Oh wait, I lost my train of thought. Having all this stuff, I'm not sharing with anybody doesn't That's give what I meant to say. <laughs> so along with emptiness, delusion is an all... Is an also? Is also a <laughs> key thing. Oh, why, yeah. why Cinderella? She's a princess. Mm -hmm. Any other wait, things? is she actually a princess? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she is. Okay. You're alive. Almost there. Almost there. Come on.
<laughs> You're live. Almost there. Almost there. Josh. Yeah. <laughs>